Hello everyone, this is lecture 11 in real analysis and we are going to discuss countable sets. We are going to define finite, countable, at most countable and uncountable sets and we are going to provide an example. We will prove that the set of all integers is countable. Before we proceed further, I would like to ask you to like, subscribe, and comment on this video, engage with this content to support this work. So before we give the definitions, let us try to think, what does it mean to count the elements of a set? So suppose we have a set E that consists of the elements A, B, and C. Uh, obviously, it has three elements. How do we count these elements? Well, we assign one to the element A, we assign 2 to the element B, and we assign 3 to the element C. So our counting reduces to, a, a, to defining a bijection F from the set 1, 2, 3 to the set E. So F is a bijection. So this example it inspires a definition of a finite set. So let E be a set. We say that E is finite if E is an empty set or there exists a natural number N and a bijection F from the set 1, 2 to N to the set E. So before we proceed further, let us recall what is a bijection. So a function F from a non-empty set X to a non-empty set Y is a bijection if two conditions hold. The first condition is that the function F is one to one, that is for every X1, X2 in the set X, F of X1 equals to F of X2 implies that X1 is equal to X2. So that's what it means that the function is one to one. It just means that it sends different arguments to different values. And the second condition uh, for a bijection is that the function f is on 2. So it means that for every y in the set capital Y, there exists little x in the set capital X such that f of x is equal to y. So basically, we have if this is our set x and this is our set y, if we take y in the set capital Y, there will be x in the set capital X, such that the function f sends x to y. So by the way, uh, in case you wanted to learn more about bijections on two and one-to-one -one functions, this is explained in a previous video, which is linked in the description to this video. So let us now consider another example of how we can count elements in a set. So in this case, we have a set E that is an infinite set. It consists of all of the fractions 1 over n, where n is a natural number. We can make the following assignments here. So we can assign 1 to the value 1 over 1. We can assign 2 to the value 1 half. We can assign 3 to the value 1 third and so on, and we can assign n to the value 1 over n. So this function f from the natural numbers to the set E is a bijection. Uh, we are not going to prove in all details that this function is a bijection, but hopefully you can see that it takes different natural numbers to different fractions, and for every fraction 1 over n, there is a natural number n such that f of n is 1 over n. So the function f is defined by the formula f of n is equal 1 over n. So this last example inspires the following definition. So let E be a set. The set E is countable if there exists a bijection f from the set of natural numbers to E. So this is exactly what we had in the previous example. We had the bijection f from the set of natural numbers to E. So the set E in the last example is countable. So let us give two more definitions. As the set E is at most countable if it is either finite or countable. The set E is uncountable if it is neither finite nor countable. 
So an example of an uncountable set is the interval 0, 1. Uh, we are not going to prove this in this video. We are going to prove this in the next video, that the interval 0, 1 is not countable. In fact, there are infinitely many numbers in the interval 0, 1, and there is no bijection from the set of natural numbers to the set 0, 1. We are going to prove this in the next video. So as far as this video is concerned, we are going to finish it with an example. We are going to prove that the set of all integers z is countable. So our strategy is going to be uh, to construct a bijection f from the set of all natural numbers to the set of all integers. So we can look at the following assignment. So we assign 1 to the value 0, we assign 2 to the value 1, we assign 3 to the value uh, negative 1, uh, 4 to the value 2, 5 to the value negative 2, and I'm going to ask you to guess to what value are we going to assign 6. If you thought that that was 3, then you were correct. So all of this is scratch. So we basically have this assignment uh, that is uh, not given by a formula, but rather by a diagram. So we have this function from natural numbers to the, to the uh, integers that is given by this diagram. So what we need to do is to find a formula for uh, the function f, and we need to prove that this function f is a bijection. If we succeed with these two tasks, we are, we are going to be able to show that the set z is countable. So let us now work uh, on a clean proof of the fact that the set z is countable. So let function f from n to z be defined by this diagram that we have just seen. Uh, so we want to come up with a formula for the function f. So we may notice that at even natural numbers, the value of the function f are positive. So at, the, at 2, the, the value of the function f is 1. At 4, the value of the function f is 2. At 6, the value of the function f is 3. So it looks like if n is even, then the value of the function f is n over 2. So f of n is equal to n over 2 if n is even. Now let us try to come up with a formula for f of n when n is odd. So at n equals 1, the value of the function f is 0. At n equals 3, the value of the function f is negative 1. At n equals to 5, it's negative 2. And at n equals to 7, it's negative 3. So you may notice that uh, minus 1 is 3 minus 1 over 2 with a negative sign in front. Negative 2 is 5 minus 1 over 2 with a negative sign in, in front. And minus 3 is 7 minus 1 over 2 with a negative sign in front. So um, we have negative n minus 1 over 2 is the value of the function f at n if n is odd. And so let us uh, write down the observation that we made uh, is that f of n is positive if and only if n is even and f of n is less than or equal to zero if and only if n is odd because we are going to need that later. So let us recall what our plan was. The plan was uh, to write a formula for the function f which we just did and the second portion of the plan was that was to prove that the function f is a bijection. So this is what we are going to do now. So let us show that our function f is a bijection. So in the beginning of this video, we reviewed that a, a function is a bijection if it is one to one and on two. So we're going to prove that the function f is one to one, and we are going to prove that the function f is on two. So let us recall that the function f from n to z is 1 to 1 if whenever we have two natural numbers m and n such that f of m is equal to f of n, then we are going to have that m is equal to n. So basically a 1 to 1 function takes different arguments to different values. So if the value of the function at two different points is the same, it must be the same point. 
So let us take m and n, two natural numbers, and suppose that f of m is equal to f of n. We want to show that m is equal to n. So if we look at the formula for the function f of n, we see that the formula depends on whether n is even or odd. And we have these two cases here. If f of n is if f of n is positive, then n is even, and if f of n is negative, then n is odd. So we are going to break this situation into two cases. So case one is when f of m is equal to f of n is positive, and case two when f of m equals to f of n is less than or equal to zero. So in the first case, we have that m and n are even, which implies that f of m is given by the formula m over 2, and f of n is given by the formula n over 2, and they are equal, which implies that m is equal to n. And this is what we wanted to show, and we are done. In the second case, we have that m and n are odd, which implies that f of m is given by the formula minus m minus 1 over 2, and f of n is given by the formula minus n minus 1 over 2, and they are equal, uh, which implies that m minus 1 is equal to n minus 1, if we multiply our equation by negative 2, which implies that m is equal to n. So in either case, we have that m is equal to n, and this is what we wanted to show, so we are done proving that the function f is 1 to 1. So the function f is 1 to 1. So let us now prove that the function f of n from n to z is on 2. So to be on 2, it means that for every integer p, there exists a natural number n such that f of n is equal to p. So this is what we are after. And uh, let us try to understand uh, what this equation f of n equals to p means. So if n is even, it means n over 2 is equal to p, which is true if and only if n is equal to 2p. If n is odd, the equation f of n equals to p means that negative n minus 1 over 2 is equal to p, which is true if and only if n minus 1 is equal to negative 2p, which is true if and only if n is equal to 1 minus 2p. So it's going to be useful to have uh, the solutions of the equation f of n equals to p for n. So let us now prove that our function is on 2. So let p be an integer. We want to show that there exists a natural number n such that f of n is equal to p. So from our scratch work, we know that either we are going to have that n is equal to 2p, or we are going to have that n is 1 minus 2p. And we know that n must be a natural number, so this is going to dictate our choice. And so we're going to have two cases. The first case is when p is greater than 0. So then we are going to set n is equal to 2p, because we, if we multiply a positive integer by 2, we are going to uh, get a natural number. So n equals to 2p is a natural number, and it's going to be even. So if it is even, then f of n is going to be given by the formula n over 2, which is going to be 2p over 2, which is equal to p. So f of n is equal to p, just like we wanted. And the second case is when p is less than or equal to 0. So in this case, we set n to be 1 minus 2p. So negative 2p is going to be a positive integer because p is less than or equal to 0, and we add 1. So overall, we are going to get a natural number. And this uh, natural number is odd because we have 1 minus 2p. So negative 2p is even and 1 is uh, odd. So when we add even plus odd, we are going to get an odd number. So n is odd. So if n is odd, f of n is given by the formula negative n minus 1 over 2. Uh, so negative, and instead of n, we plug in 1 minus 2p, and then we have minus 1 over 2. And we can simplify it, uh, so we are going to see that this is minus negative 2p over 2, which is equal to p just like we wanted to. So in, in either case, uh, we were able to find n 
natural number such that f of n is equal to p. So we, we show that our function is on 2. So the function f is on 2. Uh, so we prove that the function f is 1 to 1 and on 2. So, so f is a bijection and the set z is countable. So this finishes our proof and this finishes our video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, uh, and comment to this video to support this uh, content, to promote it so other people will be more likely to see it. And I'll talk to you in the future videos. Be good at math.